He's, so we're gonna we're gonna talk today about <clears throat> Proverbs twenty one. We're gradually moving through these. Uh, these are interesting, guys. and I kind of really enjoy this guy that does the devotion in the beginning. So I kind of put it at the front end and where a devotion probably belongs. Yeah. So we'll start out uh, today uh, with that. Hey, fellas, this is Vince Miller. Thanks so much for joining me for this devotional. Today we're in Proverbs chapter 21. I'm going to read verse 31. It states, the horse is made ready for the day of battle, but the victory belongs to the Lord. So in this text, we're introduced to some battle imagery, and I'm sure Solomon was thinking about actual hand-to-hand -hand combat on a field of war. But there are all kinds of battles, right? Physical battles are something rare for us, but, but spiritual battles are not so rare. I mean, we're going to fight them every day. Today, we're going to fight one, probably. <laughs> because one day it's a battle for something in our marriage. One day it's a battle for our children. The next, it's at work where maybe we get attacked for our beliefs and values. And the next, maybe it's some private battle with sin. And on the worst of days, it's a battle with all of them all at the same time. <laughs> now, most of the time, these battles are, are unseen, right? Known only to us. Yet we must prepare for them. As Solomon says here, you have to make ready. Make ready, right? We must prepare our horses, ready our armor, sharpen the sword, and then set the battle plan. But here's the deal. We may prepare but God is the one who gains the victory. And we have to keep this at the forefront of our minds. If we prepare for the battle, only to take the battle into our own hands, we might end up getting in the way of the God who, who's actually gonna fight the battle for us. Now, does this mean we should prepare less? No, it doesn't. Does this mean we shouldn't fight when the time is right? No, it doesn't. Does this mean we should not be passionate when we're in the battle. No, it doesn't. But this does mean that when we prepare for battle, run to battle and fight the battle, we fight as a representative of the Lord who is going to win and the victory is his. So we better make sure we fight his way. So fellas, get ready, prepare, because the battle's coming today. And it might be intense for you. So make preparations, but let God lead. For when he leads, he wins. And the victory is his, not yours. Just think about it today. What battle are you preparing for today? Let me know in the comments below. Share that battle so that we as men might be praying in the battle for each other. I love you guys. Thanks for joining me. I pray this has blessed you. If you need anything at all, reach out to me. And with that, I'll see you right back here again tomorrow. So good question. What battle are you planning to fight today? Mm. Mm. It is a good question. Yeah. Because he, he, uh, I'll give you a little background on it, is that uh, during the Old Testament, uh, God was continually uh, in a battle with other gods, Baal, uh, other than the, the Greek gods. Um, and uh, the people, uh, and I really didn't have, uh, think about a lot of this in the Old Testament, but God's representation of himself as God, the only God, was through uh, nature and not through, in, like when Jesus came, Jesus was healing people, uh, blind people, uh, paralytic people, uh, people that have died, uh, brought them back to life. But what the Old Testament, God's miracles were the pillar of fire, the parting of the Red Sea, uh, plagues, uh, but nothing that was basically uh, a miracle, miracle with human beings. So when you look in the book of Joshua, 
when uh, God is really trying to represent himself as the person that, that is in control of everything. And that's kind of where we're at on Proverbs 21 is he's trying to say, hey, no matter what you do, no matter what you battle, what battle you do and, and you succeed, you owe it to God. You don't owe it to yourself. You owe it to God that God helped you win that battle. So when Joshua had, if you recall, he had the march around the walls of Jericho. Walls of Jericho were like 20 feet high. I've seen anywhere from six foot uh, thick to 20 feet thick. <clears throat> Who knows? But it doesn't matter. He said, look, take all your priests, take the ark and walk around every day for six days walk around the uh, the walls. And uh, the last day, I just you're supposed Pepper, to, Jeff left. He remains supposed to, to uh, make much noise in my class if he's left. <laughs> anyway, as they went around at the last day, he, they blew horns and they drowned it out all the evil and all that. And the walls came down, but that was God doing that. It was not uh, Joshua. And he wanted them to see, so when the, the military on top of these walls, they're looking down, they got, you know, they got the bows and the arrows and the spears and all that. And they're looking down, they're going with a bunch of priests walking around here. Uh, you know, what, what are they gonna do? Well, after they had did their days around the wall, the walls came tumbling down. So that was a representation of God's uh, power. Our problem isn't just that we live in a sinful world, but that we live in a world of wicked people. Our sin affects everything. The question I, you'll hear it later in a video, but I'll bring it out now. If tomorrow, all the wicked people, all the people that sin, uh, that wicked, are considered wicked, by the way, all the wicked people would be gone and only the good people would be left would you still be here tomorrow? You know, <laughs> only by God's grace. Yeah, you know, and you'll hear it say, you know, none of us would be here because if if you said, okay, I, I'm I'm tired of this. Our problem is just that we have all these wicked, sinful people here on earth. And, you know, we, we got to do away with them. Well, if we did away with them, I'd be gone. Yeah, well, depends on what time of day for me. <laughs> <laughs> so we can't avoid it. We are sinful. But what the, yeah. the, the answer as we go into this is that God has granted us. He redeems us. And that's where you're coming from, Marv. And we're coming with is that got with God's grace we can be redeemed. Some say that Proverbs 21 can inspire prayers of leaders such as the current and future leaders in our countries for their salvation. The verse reads the king's heart is in the hand of the Lord. Like the rivers of water he turns it wherever he wishes. Some say this verse can be interpreted as a statement of God's authority and sovereignty over leaders. So if you look at our situation, political situation, our governmental situation right now in this country, is it in God's hands? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. We have to believe that. In control no matter what. Yeah, you know? yeah, that's right. We you know? we have to believe it, but we 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 have to be trusting. Right. That's where the faith comes in yeah and that's the important part to remember sin is in every human heart it is the villain with thousands faces it is the man who gets a woman pregnant and leaves town it's also the reputable family man who cuts down his wife and ignores his kids it is the mean-spirited woman who talks wrong about everyone but is also the sweet lad who never says an unkind word but harbors all kinds of resentment and grudges it is the kid who swears or is at his parents and blows off everyone who tries to help. I am also the kid who gets straight A's, keeps curfew and smiles at church, but in one enormous bundle of pride and self-righteousness. Break that down. What's, what's that saying?
No, no matter what we do to be righteous, we're not. Yeah. We, we often in time, we've talked about this with the guys before. We, how many people go to church every Sunday and think that's enough? You know, I go to church. I've actually heard that in my life. I've heard people say, when I'd say, well, are you a good Christian? Oh, yeah, I go to church every week. Mm -hmm. So in this, in this yeah. Proverbs 21, it says here that in, the, in it is 400 statements of wisdom of co and common sense throughout this chapter. So uh, God is really, really, really focusing on telling us about how important it is to be wise and, you know, focus on that wise and common sense. Uh, and, and wisdom isn't, by the way, the measure of intelligence. It's really common sense. And you've met those people, by the way, I have, I think you probably have too, that are so intelligent and they... I, I've had a couple that were graduates of Harvard that worked for me, uh, but their common sense level was very, very weak, very weak. In the past weeks, what has Proverbs been trying to teach us? What do you think is the key points of when Solomon sat down to do this and he's been writing these with help? What was the what was the key? Why why do you, we need this book? Uh, I don't, from, from our study perspective, it seems to me it's kind of like a guide to life. <clears throat> There's a little bit in there for every situation. Exactly. Is there any, any part that's, that you, we've talked about that we've gone through and we'll continue to go through for a while here that makes you uneasy? Hot. <coughs> tough, tough measures to meet. Yeah, yeah. What's amazing about this book is that if every part of who we are and what we do, and you'd say, well, I wonder if, that, if there's any of that in there <laughs> about me. It's all about us. Every bit of it. I think it'll, it makes us reflect and think, even though we may have, you know, we may believe in it, it's still hard to, we have to keep it in the forefront to remind us. That, 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 that's good thought, Rolf. Yeah. 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 The other thing that this does, and I, and I struggle with this too, is that it, uh, uh, we read it and we understand it and we know what it means to us but we tend to look outside of ourselves and judge other people than lonely looking at ourselves. So you say, well, like I just did a minute ago, I know people that said to me, yeah, I'm a good Christian. I go to church in my mind. I'm judging and don't know that much more about that person, but I know I'm judging because I'm saying that, mm -hmm. but yet uh, I need to look at myself. That's, my your relationship with God is what's important. Yeah. yeah. Analyze the statement. The king his king's heart is in the hand of the Lord. How can you apply this understanding to today's political leaders? That's really a tough one. What's so hard is you don't really know what's in their heart because everything is a show and so <clears throat> do they really believe what they're saying to really believe the direction they want to go and um because media just takes everything someone says and turns it either good or bad depending on who it is yep. and which media it is uh so it's really hard to know what the i have to believe that people are wanting to do the right things but People don't always agree what those are. Mm -hmm. Well, if you get the chance, it's a long read. It's a, it's like 600 pages in uh, that book, Herod and, Herod and Mary, which I finished now. Uh, it's, it's funny how God lays these things in front of you while you're doing these Bible studies and how they fit so well. But 
Herod is one that was, you know, the Jewish king, he was in, king of Judah, and, and then Mary was, her, their lives were parallel to each other, Herod's and Mary's when uh, Jesus was born. But it, anyway, the, Herod was so, uh, wanted everybody to thank him for what he was doing for them. Uh, mm -hmm. And he built marvelous structures all over Judea. Caesarea, which was on the port, which they said that it was too dangerous to ever have ships come in and out of there. So he rebuilt the port and uh, he actually, they discovered how to uh, pour cement in the ocean and have it uh, dry in the ocean. So they would have the walls out there that would uh, break down the breakers that were coming in that were so dangerous. I could go on, but he, rather than thanking God for those things, he thanked himself. And he told people all around him, see how much you, you need to adore me because all I've done for you. Uh, mm -hmm. So there, when it comes to, he was a very political leader when, that, when he was part of the throne, uh, but you've never seen so many murders. And if you read it, I mean, they're murdering their own family, their wives, uh, uh, everything is going on that's so much different. So when you look at the understanding of today's political leaders, we we need to know that they should probably, and as Tom had said, it's tough, but how do you find inside of them what they're going now? I will say that I heard one of our candidates this last week say, I am Christian. I am Christian. His next sentence was, I want all you Christians to vote for me. <laughs> you get out and vote. Christians, you vote because I am Christian. So what were they, what was he saying? Like me because I'm Christian? No. I think he wants you to come out of the vote for the, I don't know, he tried to say he wanted to vote for him, but then he wanted, you look to the CFU, you know, pick the right candidate too we want you to choose the right candidate you will choose the right candidate he's trying to tell you i think so mm -hmm. you know you know he still go out choose you want to vote for but it's too, too, you know, hard when you believe the right candidate i believe he's saying too but you know that, is that saying that the other candidate is not a christian <laughs> um, i know what i heard yeah I think read, you can't really judge they are or not, but when their actions you tell yeah. about. Okay, we'll leave it at that. I don't want to get too much into politics, but I'm saying that's how, you know, it doesn't matter who you are, us or them or whoever. God knows that we tend to do that we, uh, on our, with <laughs> ourselves. And we, the only person that gets the credit for where we go and what happens, and, and there's a reason why, and God knows what's going to happen. Uh, he's the only one that knows what's going to happen. Uh, it's it's really up to him. He is that person that makes that happen. So, if you yeah. could pick a character in your life, who would it, who would you be? Superman, Billy Graham. Is that the only choices? No, nope. <laughs> I just, I wanted to give you an idea. I, you, you got the whole host. I mean, if you want to go with Patton or Eisenhower or uh, uh, along Cassidy, which some people would not even know what I'm talking about. Uh, the Lone Marvin Ranger. The, uh, who would you be? My told me about Hopalong. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, well, Marvin, I have the hair for it. <laughs> yeah. I remember, I remember hop along. <laughs> I remember him. <laughs> you, know, you know what really made him, uh, not to get off track here, but you know, what made him so neat, unique is not just that, that white hair. He was one of the few guys that uh, were the heroes that wore a black hat. Huh? Most of them all had light white hats on. Lone Ranger had a white hat. Uh, yeah. Roy Rogers had a white hat. Uh, uh, hop along Cassie had a black hat. Actually, there was there was other along Cassie too. There were obviously along Cassie that played football for Detroit Lions. They can call him along Cassie too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, you know, I remember back then we had a black and white TV. <laughs> yeah, we were right right in there. Hop along Cassie had a black hat and white hair. 
<laughs> didn't need a color TV. Hop along no, and the Lone no. Ranger and uh, Roy Rogers would get in these tremendous fights in these bars or saloons, and their hat had never come off. No, yeah. they 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 would. That that was amazing. It really was. I went, wow! He got hit hard, but the hat didn't come off. <laughs> Any, what would you be? Who would you be? Anybody else? Mm -hmm. hmm. Too bad we could be like Jesus, really. <laughs> you know what I mean? like that. No way we'd be well, like that. We all sin. Like you never well, sin. You, <laughs> you, 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 you could try and emulate uh, one of your favorite disciples. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. I'll be honest, when I was a kid, I thought I, I really all I wanted to be Superman, and it wasn't because of his strength. I just thought it'd be cool to fly. Yeah. I thought it'd be, you know, you'd just jump out of this window and fly across the city. <laughs> that that would be pretty cool. Yeah, so, at, least you, at least you didn't say Lois Lane. So. Yeah, no, no. no. Yeah. I, I, my one brother liked Popeye. He would always say, Popeye the sailor, man, Popeye the sailor, man. <laughs> Yeah, that only goes so far with them unless you like spinach. So, <laughs> well, this is the entire thing, and I'm not going to read it because I'll be sending it to you. But this is the entire book of 21 that goes through with all those 400 uh, things of wisdom and and common sense, and we're going to talk about a few of them here in just a second, but not all of them. But this is a uh, considered one of the major uh, chapters in the book of Proverbs, and it does point at leadership. Uh, quite a bit. Okay, Proverbs 21 questions. How does Proverbs 21 demonstrate the concept of divine control over human affairs? Can you see a par parallels in modern society? And there's 21.1. In Solomon's day, kings possessed absolutely authority and were often considered to be like gods. I just mentioned you, King Herod. This proverb shows that God, not earth, earthly rulers, has ultimate authority over world events. Although they may not have realized it, the earth's most powerful kings have always been under God's control. Mm -hmm. Comments? Yeah, that's a... Uh... We to me it's we don't understand always why things are done or why decisions are made or how do we get by our leaders um, because we're looking at the short game not the long game and uh, so that's because it is hard to understand especially some of the leaders you know I think it was one of the countries where the leader where they're trying to uh the rulers in different countries who right now even in our i think i read in the morning this morning the paper one of the leaders i can't remember which country it was that ended up getting a, a running away because he really was a dictator and the, and he cheated on the right. um voting and but the, the crowd took him out uh, which was interesting <clears throat> so it, yeah it's it's hard to get to to understand all that and and accept that um mm -hmm. and, yeah even though we know that's the case you know i remember in one of our bible studies raul i don't know yeah it might even have been down to odm but when god hardened pharaoh's heart back in the old days mm -hmm. people said why did why why did he do that why did he do that because all that all those calamities and everything else. And I guess it was, you, you know, the answer, I, I guess, is because is for God's glory. And what I mean by that is you look, not in our timing, but his timing, the events that followed that centuries <laughs> afterwards, it was an example to his people of what God can do. I don't know if that's explained right, but... Well. Um, yeah, that's that's the long game that I was talking about. So that long makes game, yeah, yeah. You know, our our situation that we struggle with from day to day is something that God already knew that we were going to struggle with, 
And uh, does that change his thoughts or about the plan? Not at all. It is in God's hand. And when we say, uh, and I've done it with my own kids to say, well, you know, you know, I know you're struggling with this, but you got to give it up to God. You got to pray. Yeah. And uh, we really do struggle with that. I really do. There's, there's, uh, and we've also <laughs> said, sometimes God uses bad people <laughs> to yeah. get, get his word across. Yeah. Well, and, yeah. Uh, that, that, that seems to be the case. And the other thing is, is that I don't know if you ever noticed that from the Jewish religion and reading Hebrew, uh, they almost justify everything that happens because it's the way God wants it. And when they, they do that, uh, they will say that there's nothing, they, they're, everything that's happening is already in scripture. It's all already in prophecy. It's already there. It already tells us that, that what we're talking about right now, it tells us that. So uh, they pretty much are on board with that. The only thing that they, uh, the very strict Jewish people have not accepted the fact that the Messiah has been here and will come back. That That's the one part that they have not. And it's only a part of the, the Jewish religion, not the entire Jewish religion. Sure. Yeah. How do we know you're saying about bad people can can bring the things that need to happen through God's plan, but how do we know that bad people aren't really bad people that will have nothing to do with God's plan? We only God knows that. So we can project that that bad people might be what's needed, but we don't really know that. Yeah. We don't know that we don't know we don't know. We don't know either way. Yeah. So given a choice. From our position as humans, if a person is bad or a person is unknown or whatever the case may be, how do you make that decision when you go to something you know is bad with the hope and prayer that it will turn out good? That's that's really tough because yeah. we're just projecting what we want to see, um, but we don't have any idea if that's God's plan. Well, the ultimate good is going to heaven and being with God. And, uh, and I, I hear you, I really do. But the bad people that God uses once in a while, definitely they go to hell because they do not redeem themselves through God or Jesus Christ. And the, everything changes when Jesus comes in Messiah and dies for our sins. So we, the door opens up, the door opens up for us, no matter, you know, and you've heard people say, you know, did Al Capone, when he went, you know, uh, he, when he died, did he go to heaven or did he go to hell? Well, if he confessed and redeemed himself with God and Jesus Christ, uh, from humanity standpoint, we go, oh, that can't be, that can't be real. But from a heavenly side with God, yeah, that can't happen. It can't well, look, look at the cross and look at Calvary. I mean, uh... yeah. The, the 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 one bad person redeemed himself. Yeah. Now sometimes bad people, and I, you know, reading this book I just read again, the Herod book, I read what Herod was doing. He didn't really understand, but he was really probably fo fo people were focusing more and more on the one God more than ever because of the cruelty that this guy was, I mean, he would, he would kill somebody at the drop of a hat, have their heads cut off. I mean, he had his own wife's head cut off. Uh, so he a very mean man, but yet through all of that meanness, uh, more and more people, it didn't. And if this is why it's such a good book, they contrast Mary's life at the same time. It didn't affect Mary, it didn't affect her people, it didn't affect that they were very strong, meager people, but it came to God and, G and, and Jesus because of Mary. It also yeah. talks about Mary's mom and dad and talks about uh, Joseph. Most I've ever heard about Joseph, by the way, is in this book. Joseph is in there, uh, talks about that Joseph was actually not a carpenter uh, he was a mason. He was really, I mean, carpenters wouldn't have been worth much in those days because they didn't do much with wood. 
they did a lot with uh, stone. Huh. And uh, so he was a stone masonry guy. So, but getting off track that if you get a chance to read it, that's a good, good book. And don't let, uh, you know, Kathy Lee Gifford fool you. She's, a, <laughs> I found out as in life, you find out she's a whole lot smarter than I thought. She, she did a really nice job on this book. No. Yeah. And they could change a bad person to be really, you know, a little hard around real good. Look like in the Bible, Saul was so bad and he came Paul and he came, you know, he came one of the greatest vengeance ever. <laughs> yeah. 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 Anything else? Analyze the statement of the King. Let's go here. Discuss the assertion that righteousness and justice are more valuable to God than sacrifices. How can this inform your daily actions? Keep in mind, up to this point, you know, uh, and, and Bethlehem, by the way, is where the really nice sheep were raised to be sacrificed. Uh, so when it says here that it's, it's that that righteousness and justice are more valuable to God than sacrifices. Our good deeds and offerings are not bribes to make God overlook our character faults. You say, okay, I'm going to give a lot of money this week because I really screwed up this week. So when I go to church, I'm going to give a big donation because that's going to buy me out of the trouble I'm in. We can't exchange good behavior in one area for bad behavior in another. If our personal and business dealings are not characterized by justice, no amount of generosity when the offering plate is passed will make up for it. Comments, feelings? Well, that'll save me some money. No, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Is that why every time they come by you, Tom, you just raise your hand up like that? <laughs> <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> yeah. It's it's in there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I pay it at the office. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, it's so funny. I think about this as growing up as a kid. There was no way of getting away because the offering plate was the only way you gave <laughs> in those days. Yeah. You know? Uh, and I don't know what the percentage is, and I'm, I'm one of them, uh, but that gives by their phone or uh, electronically. Yeah, uh, I, I have a tendency, I will tell you, that when I was giving in the plate, I know this is true, and I've talked to Debbie, when I was days of putting money in the plate, I give more when I'm on the phone than I did, did when I did mm -hmm. the plate. I just do. And I and if I had you had to say, well, why? I don't know. <laughs> I just do. I tend to go, okay, this is coming straight out of the bank account, so I'm I'm just going to give this, which tends to be more than if I was, you know, throwing a twenty dollar bill in there. Comments? Well, I think for for us, for example. Uh, <clears throat> by giving online or whatever else you've determined then what you want to give and you've made uh, um, you know you, you know what it's going to be if say if it's 10 percent, you know what your income is and you give 10 percent of that or 15 percent or whatever it might be on sunday if you just throw money in the plate i don't think you think of that you just yeah. well, i got a 20 or i got a 10 or all I got today is a couple bucks, or whatever that might be. Oh yeah, and how many? In those days, you know, I look maybe I look at Debbie. Debbie looks at me. I'll say, "Hey, do you have?" And she'll go, well, "I don't have any cash." Wow. Well, okay. Well, I got some money here. I'll throw that in there. And you know, it's meager compared to what you can do when you just get on your phone and you can get right into the bank account and uh, and do it that way. Right. And. The other part of this is, Raul, I don't know if you part of this, but the, it's amazing what our church, you you get, I can be sitting in the pew and I can get my money off the phone with the code, uh, the Q code on the QR code, yeah. Yeah. And within, I would say within a minute, maybe a little more than that, but within a minute, I get a thank you to yeah. my text saying thank you for your donation. Hmm. Now, 
you know, when you do the plate, there wasn't anybody standing there. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. But when you do it that way, you get an immediate thank you for doing it, which is kind of neat. I've always been amazed at that, at how quickly that comes back. So reflect on the warnings about contentious and ill-tempered companions. How can this wisdom guide your relationships? The faithful completion of, of our mundane task is a great accomplishment. Just work is patiently carried out according to plan, to a plan. Diligence does not come naturally to most people. It is a result of strong character. Don't look for quick and easy answers. Be a diligent servant of God. Reflect on that. What's that saying? You know, we've got, we all have our relationships with people. Some of them are not great. I mean, when it comes to what we've been talking about, they've got their weaknesses. And without being judgmental, what should we do? This is where Jesus is our guide. We stay the course. <clears throat> we, we stay the course. We stay on the path of what is, what we consider is forgiveness, grace, righteousness. Uh, and uh, rather than be a judge, we stay the course. And I've learned this just by being the mentor of our mentorship program that we have, is that if you stay the course as a mentor and you don't change who you are, without trying to change who they are, they become more like you than you like them. Yeah, good point. Well, so it isn't about saying uh, discipleship, <clears throat> saying I'm going out to the world to change everybody. I'm going out to the world to show everybody how I, <clears throat> God has been good to me and what God is all about. Yeah, you know, you get involved in that stuff, Raul and Gary, I know both of you will agree. You get into those situations with those guys, and it humbles you. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I don't know how many times, and I know it's true for any of you, that when you hear these stories, and you always have a story in the back of your mind that relates to their story, and you think, wow, we're, we're more alike than, than different here, because wow. I've got a story that I can tell you about where I've been in that same situation. And uh, so there, there is a lot of agreement. Uh, as human beings, we're, we're, uh, we come into this world the same, <clears throat> and we leave it the same. So what does the text teach about envy, greed? How can we, uh, these insights inform your attitudes towards wealth and success? Discuss the idea that human strength is meaningless in the face of divine judgment. How does this challenge uh, societal views of power and victory? It is usually better to learn from the mistakes of others than from our own. We can do this by observing other people's lives and listening to their advice. Take counsel from others instead of plunging ahead and learning the hard way. Hmm. We all need mentors. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. <clears throat> this is the one area where I think we have uh, lost is that, and I look to you and I ask you, I know it's for me, is that I was fortunate to have grandparents that were around that I learned and listened. I didn't understand that I was really listening though, but I was oh. because as I got older, I began to see how intelligent they were now. I also had grandparents that were very Christian people and they had practices that I didn't adopt immediately. <clears throat> but now when I look back and you look at those where it says take counsel from others instead of plunging ahead and learning the hard way. Grandparents did a great job of setting the stage for you. If you just listened. <laughs> that were Christian. Uh, what any thoughts? I will tell you that we we talked to many, 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 young, both young and old, who have no idea who their grandparents are. Yeah, they have no idea who their father is. And if they do, they hate him. Yeah. 
no, it's it's like the thirty three program that I read through. I mean, you, that's so many of the cases. They it's either you don't know who your father is, or you just hate him, and and uh, and you're struggling to forgive him. Yeah. Yep. So in the structure of this world, to go back to what Tom was talking about, about knowing some of these things, you know, some of the most simple things about man and woman and, and, and offspring and sons and daughters and life, it, it's not difficult. <laughs> it's pretty <coughs> simple, really. But we tend to make, uh, we, we come up with, uh, we get off the, the path, we're talking about the path, we get off the path and, and uh, we saw a little bit of this and I, we can discuss this a little bit about, we saw this in the Olympics. Uh, we, we have a person that by God tests with X and Y chromosomes is a man, is in the ring with a woman and is beating the crap out of this woman. And all of a sudden what everybody was saying, well, you know, we're gonna have single bathrooms in the public schools. We're gonna do this, we're gonna do that. All of a sudden we realize that, you know, it's, it is simple, it's in the Bible. It says, no, that's not right. Comments? You did see that when they went to the, uh, the uh, Olympic board or whatever they call, they didn't see any problem with it. Yeah, all that. Well, there. Here, here we go again. Yeah. But this same person, when they had the world championships, which wasn't the Olympics, this person was disqualified by yep. testing. They had the X and Y chromosomes that made him a man. It was a they, shock to me to realize that it's not just in the U.S., but that showed to me that throughout the world having the same issue. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Yeah. And God has set us up to where we're running into ourselves here because I came through an era where the the females of the world, quite honestly, were an equity on how they were treated on when they got their practice for basketball, when they got their practice for any other the other sports, volleyball, whatever, or if they even had girls sports was not there. So they passed Title IX. Title IX says, OK, all public schools, you got to. No, no more of that. You got to have equity about <coughs> men's sports and women's sports. So they did all this improvement in the schools, which was good. And all of a sudden you see the women's sports just rising to the top. They're just doing so well. And now all of a sudden we're beginning to tear it. They don't know what to what, you know, and Congress is saying, what, what do we do here? Because we got Title IX. How do we enforce it when we get this other side's coming along? We're saying, oh, yeah, that's okay. We can't do that. You can't do both. Right. Yeah. Well, it's not Congress. It was an executive order to include gender identity in uh, Title IX. Yeah, yeah. And it's, just, uh, it's, yeah, that's crazy. And I've said it, and i said it before, being an educator, been around this long time. What you'll see is the one thing that always has been kind of predicted is that public schools will continue to die on the vine because public schools are funded by the state and the state is funded by the federal government and yeah. the money runs down through those categories. So if you don't follow what the federal government says, executive order or whatever, you can lose your funding. So public schools will do what they're told to do. Whereas private schools don't have to do that. If they don't take the funds and they they do, they run privately, like a Hillsdale College, I give an example, yeah. uh, they don't have to do that. And you'll see more and more parents that can't afford to do it. They will go to private schools and public schools will begin to be not the place to be, which is sad. It's America's been made great by public schools. They've been the one place anybody could go and get a great education. No, but once you start giving public money to private, this just occurred to me. Uh, once you start giving public money to private schools, then you start also taking control a little bit at a time. Yep. You, yeah. bet, you bet you do. Oh, yeah. yeah that's, no. that's, you know, and that's I, why it's really important. And if you look at the, ad, the uh, ads for like Hillsdale, and I use them again, college, 
they oh very openly say we take no no tax no federal money at all they operate totally off of uh donations yeah. and uh and tuition money and you know what's uh, scary you think you know i've got grandkids that are college age and all that and one of the easiest things for them to do is get a credit card everybody wants to give them a credit card <laughs> and in debt in debt in debt in debt and they can study journalism and 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 do not a damn thing with that and be in debt but there's a college and my grandkids aren't going to it but they checked it out there's a college called university of the ozarks mm -hmm. think of that as as maybe a bunch of hillbillies but i gotta tell you what there's two, two things three things actually that they promote number one uh patriotism i should say number one christianity number two patriotism and those kids are encouraged to work at the college or someplace else so that when they graduate they're just about debt free so i'm thinking those th all those three things wow, that's dynamite oh yeah <clears throat> Yeah, there's a few of those private. colleges, Liberty College, Hillsdale College, Ozark College. Uh, there's colleges that are that are doing that. And uh, it's it's to have the people like yourself and the people that are friends of ours. They have to start supporting those colleges because those are the places probably the best place to go. If I yeah, uh, if I had and I, you know, I I've done it with my own grandkids when they've been asking me about colleges, I've. I pretty much told them to stay away from the big me mega colleges and go to the smaller colleges. Uh, yeah. There's a lot to be learned. The classes are smaller. Uh, you don't see all the liberal crap that's going on in the large colleges, the demonstrations on the campus. And, mm -hmm. you know, you don't, when you watch the news, you don't see Ozark College demonstrating in their campus. They just yeah, don't right. do that. No. Yeah. And, and when you send your kids to a private school, too, you're actually paying education twice. You, you have paid tradition to send them to private school. You're also paying this out of Texas for the kids that are going to public school. So you're actually paying twice. Yeah, you do. Yeah. yeah. Gentlemen, I need to leave you. So God bless. I'm taking my youngest dog to get his teeth clean. So I there will you be, go. I, uh, my eyes will be dripping when I get the bill, but. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I know. I've had. I was just thinking while you said that, Bill, because I said that is no cheap deal. <laughs> About six hundred dollars today. Yeah. So. Yeah. Hey, God bless you all. God we'll bless you. Next you. Week. Thanks for being on. Bye, Bill. Bye, Bill. All right. What lessons can you learn from Proverbs twenty-one about dealing with difficult people or situations? We should work hard to meet the needs of poor people. This is where they consider difficult people. By the way, it's not the person that's arguing with you. It's the people around us that are poor and, and how they protect their rights for it's always possible that someday we may be in need of the same help ourselves. I kind of went through this this last couple of weeks when I had this closet full of clothes, clothes I haven't worn in a year or more. And uh, so with that happening, uh, my wife just walked in. That's why well, she's supposed to be at work. <laughs> so anyway, uh, with all these clothes that I have, I'm going, why am I keeping these? <laughs> so I really started unloading. Now I'm looking at my closet. And I'm going, okay. I, it, there was some sense of security having all those clothes. And now I look, I say, well, I got a few shirts, <laughs> uh, <laughs> but that that's good. So we do need to continue to do. I know what all of you are doing and that's looking to the poor. In what ways can the teachings of Proverbs 21 help you navigate the complexities of your modern life? This proverb is about saving for the future. Easy credit has many people living on the edge of bankruptcy. Kind of what Mar was just talking about. These, these credit card companies literally sit down in the, uh, the hallways of the schools in the colleges and encourage people to get a credit card, by the way. The desire to keep up appearance and accumulate for pushes them to spend every penny they earn and they stretch their credit to the limit. But even when anyone who spends all of it he has is spending more than he can afford. A wise person puts money aside for hard times. God approves the foresight and restraint. God's people need to examine their lifestyles to see whether their spending is God pleasing or merely self pleasing. 
Agree? Agree. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. The kind of worship sacrifice described in this proverb is no better than a bribe. How do people try to bribe God? They may go to church, tithe, or volunteer, not because of their love and devotion to God, but because they hope God will bless them in return. See, you're good to go, Tom. I know that you're you're looking for the blessings, not uh, anything else. So, uh, but God has made it very clear that He desires obedience and love more than religious ritual. God does not know, does not want our sacrifice of time, energy, and money alone. He wants our hearts, our complete love and devotion. We may be able to bribe people. So each other, we can bribe each other, but you can't bribe God. Yeah, you know me, I'll give God anyway. In a way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Comments on that? Yeah, it's interesting. Um, you never think about that, but I remember making, saying, God, if you do this for me, I'll do this. Um, many years ago, continue to do it in your mind. You think about that. Um, so it's also a, a continued challenge um, to, to not think in that way. Oh, yeah. Plus, uh, I read this somewhere where God, when you do the covenants, like I did the same thing, where you say, God, if you just do this for me, this is what I'm going to do for you. <laughs> yeah. right. Well, God takes those covenants very seriously. Yeah. All right. This is, this is a good, good question. It says, what is your plan? Uh, is it a blueprint? Is it based on God's instructions for building your life? The spirit that exists in you can, this guy gets up in the middle of a, uh, this uh, evangelist is speaking and he gets up and he asks this question of him. So I'm going to let you hear it. It's interesting. I, you know, it's funny how these things pop up for me. Every mm -hmm. time I do any lesson, they come from nowhere. This came from nowhere. If Satan fell from heaven, mm -hmm and a third of the angels fell with him, why did God not just lock him up right then? Why is he waiting? Why does he get dominion over this world? I could, we could just as easily ask, why doesn't he lock us all up right now? In fact, let me ask you guys a question. If God were to stop evil at midnight tonight, would you still be alive at 1201? Ooh. No, I wouldn't be. None of us would be. God allows evil knowing he can redeem it. If God didn't allow us free will, which gives us the ability to do evil, but also the ability to love. If God doesn't allow free will, then we don't have a moral universe. And God can't redeem anything that's gone wrong. He didn't want to create robots. That's a completely different kind of being than a free will creature who can choose to love or disobey. So God gives us the ability to love, but also disobey, and he knows he can redeem it. He knows he can buy it back. He knows he can rescue the situation for people that want to be rescued. For those that don't want to be rescued, they don't have to be rescued. God will separate himself from them, and that's what hell is. It's separation from God. So God gives us the ability to do what we want to do, and he also comes into this universe, which he did 1991 years ago this week to provide the sacrifice so we can be reconciled to him because if he's infinitely just and he is he's got to punish sin and he doesn't want to punish us so what does he do he punishes himself in our place I mean think about it this way ladies and gentlemen everyone believes in justice and the only thing you're gonna get in the afterlife is either justice or grace what do you want I don't want justice do you want justice no you want grace I want grace that's why he came in so why why doesn't he stop Satan why does not he stop all of us he could but he's given us an opportunity to make a choice I know he's gonna get his justice well it, it, everything's gonna be done justly and uh, justice for those who have accepted Christ goes on Jesus. Those who haven't, it goes on them. Look, either you're going to pay or Jesus is going to pay. Who do you want to pay? Oh. 
of eight, right? That was yeah. pretty good. Really? If so. Okay, prayer of the day. We pray that you help us to spread good news of the Lord, Lordship, uh, of your living leadership, of your salvation for all who trust in as Lord our lives and the places where we live, under the leaders where we live, and God places around the world, especially where this gospel has gone, hasn't gone. So final prayer, Lord, please forgive us. We are not perfect. We are sinners. Sometimes we forget to pray. At times we forget to thank you. And sometimes we lose our temper. I know you see every little thing we do, but thank you, you for always giving us another day to start anew. My Lord, please do not leave us. You are our everything. Amen. Other prayers. You know, I, I want to pray for me that I'm better now because Saturday I was exercising. I got done exercising. I warm up thing. I go off by some of my leg well. So I, I wouldn't say hurt my leg this morning. On Sunday morning, right up that morning, I, I was I couldn't even hardly walk that morning. My knee was hurting me so bad that I put the um, icy hot pad on my knee that ice and stuff and it went away right away i was able to go to church now i feel a lot better than then but <laughs> a lot better now today so i did actually at all today i feel walking better now about what i did in there on saturday but <laughs> good david good. you know you know so others you know my son's going through a procedure today just pray for him it's to relieve some of the pain he's with his, um the the, the <clears throat> chronic uh, disease that he has and then I have my uh, granddaughter significant others also in the doctor having an operation so pray for both of those wow okay you bet any others who'd like to pray us out Marv you look good to me today <laughs> <laughs> That's that's the way to do it, Gary. If nobody answers, pick somebody up. <laughs> oh, uh, Heavenly I, Father, great God Almighty, thank you for all of your blessings, those that we are aware of and those that uh, we're not aware of that you will give us through your grace. Lord, we thank you again for your grace, for uh, giving us the opportunity to be saved and uh, to not... Uh, to not get what we actually deserve. Thank you again for that grace. Lord, we thank you for the members of this uh, Bible study, those that uh, are struggling uh, with health issues, with mental issues, and those that uh, uh, we have not even, uh, we have not even brought to this group yet. Um, we know that uh, Faith in you uh, will strengthen us, even though the times that we don't understand, uh, it is our human understanding that keeps us from uh, from peace sometimes. Uh, but thank you for your faith, which will sustain us. Lord, again, uh, bless Gary for his uh, leadership and uh, everyone here for their participation. In Jesus' holy name, amen. 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 Hey, thanks, guys. Thanks, have, have a great, great weekend. Great prayer, Marv. Uh, thanks. Yeah. You guys have a good one. All righty. We'll see ya. Yeah. Bye. 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 -bye.